<laughs> I guess it's actually record. Hi, everybody. CJ with George Astronomy. Gotta have a Red Bull. And look, it matches the painting. How convenient is that? So the purpose of this video, well, the purpose of the video is to address the elephant in the room. If you are, uh, if you know me before Georgia astronomy, that means you knew me under Roswell astronomy. And uh, if you knew me under Roswell astronomy, then uh, you know what the elephant in the room is. You know, why did I kill the channel? Why did I shut down two years worth of work? And uh, if you're if you're new and if don't know me and have never seen the channel, uh, then this video is probably not going to make a lot of sense to you. Uh, I will put a video up after this one for my trip out to Deer Lake, so it'll be back uh, more towards the astronomy. But I also felt it was important to put this video out, and the reason being is because I still get constantly people are asking me about Roswell astronomy, and part of it too is because the website's still up, <laughs> so. <laughs> People that were trying to track me down on on YouTube and realized the trap that it's not gone or that the the channel's gone. Uh, you know, if you Google search, you'll run across the website. So I had a had a lot of feedback when I shut down the channel. Uh, some of it was really good, some of it was very supportive, and then there was also a lot of hate going on too. A lot of people were uh, pretty pissed off that I killed the channel, which I'll go over to more in here in just a minute. Uh, the reason why I killed the channel, so the elephant in the room, why why did this happen? Um, well, uh, time, money, depression, COVID. There you go. All right, good video. Let's go. <laughs> Just playing. Uh, yeah, what killed it? So... There were a lot of things that led up, led up to it. It was just a culmination of, uh, you know, uh, bricks falling off the wall, basically. And it, it started about August or so of 2019 when I was getting ready to move. Y'all knew that I was moving from Roswell uh, to someplace. And the reason behind that was I wanted darker skies. I wanted a yard for Allie to be able to, to play and run around in. And I didn't want to be living like this with neighbors anymore. So the search went out, started looking for a house, and at the same time, my realtor and uh, her uh, stager came in and looked at my place and said, well, you got some stuff to do here to, to get the most value out of it. So it involved repainting, renovating an upstairs bathroom, uh, uh, redoing the kitchen, and then uh, replacing some uh, French doors out to the patio. And uh, at the same time, on Saturdays, I was with my realtor searching through North Georgia, trying to find a place to live that uh, met my criteria and um, uh, was still accessible to work and to, towards my mom's and everything else. So at, at the same time that was going on, my cat, Isabel, if y'all remember her from some of the earlier videos, uh, little Isabel, who was an 18-year-old Maine Coon, was pretty much on her last legs. And while I was right in the middle of the renovation and looking for the new house and juggling the job and dealing with new neck pain for another bulged disc that I had, first one I had replaced some years beforehand and then I did it again, uh, weightlifting being stupid. Um, so, you know, physical pain, renovation, trying to find a new house, uh, cat on her death on her deathbed, which I finally had to put down um, during all this. If you know anything about YouTube creators or what's involved in, in creation of a channel, uh, there's like a formula that you basically have to maintain in order to constantly build your subscriber count, uh, grow your monetization, to grow your brand, and to keep pushing forward. And one of those requirements is, is you have to churn out videos like constantly, uh, you know, they recommend at least one a week that you churn one out, uh, minimum one every couple of weeks. Uh, if you hit like a million p subscribers, nobody gives a damn when you put one out. But you know, when you're starting out, you're kind of moving along. Uh, yeah, you, you got a lot to turn out. And for every video that you put out, there's an enormous time suck that goes with that. So for every one minute of usable video, that you're using can be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour's worth of editing. 
Uh, and I say that because it's, uh, you know, searching for music, it's splicing, it's cutting scenes, it's retakes, even uh, when you realize you screwed up something or the sound didn't work or your lighting wasn't right or whatever the hell it was. It, it works out to be about an hour's worth of time per one minute of video. Um, now, towards the end, I was able to, once I had libraries built up and I could just pick, pull and grab from all my different editing software, uh, it was probably about 15 to 20 minutes per one minute. So it's still, it's still a big time suck. It takes time. But if you want to build a channel, if you want to stay monetized, if uh, you want to stay as an influencer, if you want to be part of, you know, the, like the Amazon Influencers Program, um, if you want to deal with OEMs, things like that, you, you have to put a lot of work into it. And it wasn't like I was trying to become YouTube famous. Uh, I, I've got a good job. Uh, I like it. You know, it's okay. I'm really good at it. But, uh, you know, if I could be paid to do astronomy in a YouTube channel, I would do it in a heartbeat. But then again, I could don't, you know, I could give 40, 50 hours a week towards it and it, you know, not be any different than me going to work. But when you do both of them, it, it's a lot. So, Cat dying, uh, renovating the house, finding a new house. And then when I found this house, I had to renovate part of it. Um, all that going on, you know, all first world problems, basically. So I'm not crying for empathy or sympathy, but just all first world problems. The, the pressure of churning out videos, um, trying to find content, writing content. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's not just I suddenly turn on video and record. A lot of thought time goes into it. So all of this compounded together kind of was, was put a lot of stress on me. Enter COVID 2020. <laughs> so, you know, in March, of course, of 2020, um, that's when the lockdowns began. And with my particular job, I'm an operations manager for an industrial electric motor company, for a sales company that reps for an industrial manufacturer, industrial mo electrical motor manufacturer. Um, the, I was still going in and I was going in at like 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I was there to uh, temp check in our employees. Uh, three times during the day was going throughout the facility and uh, disinfecting it from where everybody had touched, you know, during the different parts of your day. Uh, till staying till 6, 6.30 at night to clean the place because at that point we had uh, chucked our cleaning company. The majority of our employees were sent remote. There was only three of us that were in our office and then there was four guys that were out in our warehouse. And the, the whole reason for keeping the facility open was just so we could ship. Uh, honestly, the office staff didn't, didn't really matter at that point. It was all about you know the, the crew in the back. And so uh, anybody who knows me personally knows that you know I'm, I'm a, a zero to 100 kind of guy. Either I give it my all or I quit. And uh, so starting on March 15th, it was giving my all. And I was maintaining that pressure up until uh, December of, of 2020. Uh, and then as the new year rolled in, you know, things started to get a little bit more lax. But uh, so during those nine months, um, a lot of things were just culminating. Uh, you know, I was working a lot of hours. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time to do video when I did have some free time that I, I felt compelled that I had to do video. Uh, it wasn't a joy anymore. It was becoming a hindrance. It was becoming a real pain in the ass. Um, trying to find content to be original uh, because, you know, after a while, when you're successful on YouTube, a lot of people tend to copy you. Um, it, not to say that as a, as a creator, I don't copy other people, but you know, every, it starts to become kind of like a carnival ride. It's just round and round and round. So if you know, you do one thing, somebody behind you is going to do the same thing. So in order for you to, to get a jump on everybody, you got to find something more and it, it becomes, it becomes pretty difficult to do. So you're, you're trying to find new content. Um, I just got done with the move was still kind of getting this place set up. It, the rain and the clouds came in for like, and people in Georgia will validate this, it's, it was something like two or three months straight of just crap weather to, to do any kind of imaging. And even if it was clear, 
then the moon was up and it was like a full moon. So there was like this long stretch of where I couldn't even get the telescope outside. And I was coming up with all sorts of different <clears throat> things to just try to keep people engaged and keep the channel running. So um, with everything that was going on there, uh, it was just really starting to become unmanageable. And I no longer was finding any joy in the hobby. And I was not finding any joy uh, with, with doing the channel, which for me, I, I, I love to be creative. I've always been very creative. You know, I was in, in drama, I was in band, I was in uh, debate, I was, uh, I, I was in art, I went to art school for a little bit. Um, I love video, I love the formatting, I love uh, the, the editing and matching music and all sorts. Of, I love all that kind of stuff. So that became a hindrance as well, and it got to the point where I wasn't enjoying doing it any longer. And what little free time I had was uh, trying to maintain that um, and maintain time for myself, maintain, maintain some time with, with Ali, you know, for the house, etc. So, you know, out of a 24-hour day, 12 of that, 11 to 12 of that was at work, uh, come home, take Ali out for about an hour and play with her, get her all situated, and then, you know, jump on the computer and start trying to churn out content. On top of that, I had gotten uh, hooked up with an OEM, with one of the manufacturers. And uh, it, I'm not saying anything bad about them. I want, to, I want to make sure I make that perfectly clear. I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm sure some of you know. Um, and they're, they're still, they still manufacture a great product. They're a good company. I have nothing against them. Uh, have nothing but nice things to say about them. Um, but there, there was a point to where uh, I received an item for free that I was doing a, uh, a video on for them. And there was no, there was no, there was none of this, you have to say this, you have to do this, blah, blah, blah. There was none of that. There was none of that whatsoever. Um, and it was more kind of a, of a, a gentleman's agreement uh, to where I submitted the video prior to uh, prior to actually publishing, and and they didn't like the video, and uh, they felt I was being unfair in the video, and uh, said you know we we don't want you to do this, so I, I submitted a second video which they looked over and they they kind of him and hauled a little bit about it, and I wound up doing a third re revision before they said okay you can publish that. And that's where I, I went sideways with it because uh, if anybody knows, remembers, the whole original reason for Roswell Astronomy was uh, that I wasn't going to be bought and paid for, uh, that every review I did was, was true and honest, and a lot of people appreciated that. I gave you the, the good sides of the product, and I also gave you the, the bad sides, some of the downsides. It didn't mean I didn't like the product. If anything, it meant that I really liked the product, but there were some pitfalls that I thought could be improved. And you know, anybody can attest, I've recommended uh, almost every product that I've tested on the channel or that I've reviewed on the channel, um, I've, I've recommended to a certain degree, but I also advised you of some of the issues I saw, which I think a lot of people appreciated because I wasn't the guy that went out there and said, you know, it's the greatest thing in the world, man. It rocks. You know, I never did that. Um, it was, hey, it's pretty damn good, but it's yellow, you know, or something along those lines. Um, so, again, while there was no official you can or you cannot do this, um, just the statement of, yeah, we're okay with you publishing this um, kind of hit me a little bit wrong. Now, knowing, knowing that nowadays, I get it. I'm fine with it. If you're sponsored, if you get a uh, an endorsement thing going on, a deal, or somebody wants to sponsor your channel, or they want to pay you to to mention their names, I get it. You got to play the game, and uh, and I get that now. Uh, so the lesson that I learned is, you know, when you engage into those those kind of scenarios with people, it needs to be pretty upfront about exactly what your expectations are as well as what their expectations are. Um, I didn't lose any creative control over the channel um, as, it, like, as if somebody told me I could and could not do something. It was still my channel, but the release of it 
Um, again, it was the, the wording of, okay, you can publish this. That was just like, almost made it feel like somebody was controlling the channel. And in retrospect, I could have just said, hey, you know what? I'm not even going to do the video on it. If you, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, I'll just won't do the video. And it wasn't that I was saying anything hurtful or derogatory. Um, it was Some of it was miscommunication. And uh, some of it was just like r real feelings that I thought could have been improved upon. And, and so the relationship really wasn't that strained um, as it was that uh, I just didn't, I didn't like the way that was going. And it was something that I, I had vowed when I created Roswell Strami that I would not do. Uh, so it kind of felt like I went back on my own self and that I guess I violated my own creed, I, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, and that made me feel really cheap. Uh, and it, it, I did not have any respect whatsoever for myself at that point. Uh, and again, I'm not, I wasn't thinking I'm going to go out there and become, you know, million subscriber YouTube famous. I mean, this is astronomy, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very niche group. Um, yeah, some, some people do it quite well other than others and they've got great followings and more power to them. Uh, you know, some have been able to actually make a career out of it and by all means, um, go for it. Uh, if anything, I'm jealous because I would love to be able to do that. But, uh, you know, you have to play some games. And uh, at, at that time, I, I really wasn't, I, I didn't, I was too naive about it and too sanctimonious to understand that. So going forward, I get it. Uh, back then, uh, you know, I was too proud, too pissed, and too egotistical. So that was a bad thing. The, uh, w with all that COVID and everything and all that was going on, uh, I remember my friend Chris called me up and he said, because I was just down, just completely down about it. And, you know, much like everybody else and with COVID, uh, I kind of sank into a depression. I didn't kind of, I did. I sank into a depression. Uh, I wasn't able to, uh, there was no outlets for me. Uh, it, it was, you know, work, home, work, home, work, home. Uh, nobody was going out to eat. Nobody was going to the movies. I wasn't able to see any of my friends. Uh, I wasn't even able to see my mother for, for like six or seven months. So it, uh, you know, it gets to you just like everybody else. It, it gets to you and the psyche gets to you. And it just got to the point where it was just depression. I was just going through the motions every day, uh, just one day at a time, get up, go to work, come home, get up, go to work, come home. And like I said, I remember Chris asking me, he goes, you know, have you ever thought about just hanging it all up and just being done? And the first couple of times he mentioned that, I, I was, you know, it was kind of like, eh, you know, I don't know, I'll stick, I'll try to stick through it, I'll try to stick through it. And in the end, uh, the last time he asked me about it, I said, you know what, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm completely done. Um, I'm done with the trolls. Uh, I'm done with, you know, spending hours and hours and hours, you know, trying to come up with content that would make people happy. Uh, I, I lost sight of everything that the channel, I originally had set the channel out to be. So uh, it, it honestly disgusted me and um, I had absolutely zero respect for myself as a result uh, of, uh, of the content that I was producing at that point. I was ashamed of it, to be honest with you. Uh, and that was the reason why I pulled the plug. I was like, uh, yeah, you know what? Mm -mm. You know, it, it, my ego got in the way. Um, my thinking got in the way and, uh, it was just, it was too much. And, uh, and so I pulled the plug Yeah, you know, for me, when I pull a bandaid off, that pop it off and throw it away, be done with it. Um, you don't save band-aids and, uh, uh, unfortunately that doesn't apply to video stuff either. So I, when I pulled the plug, I threw everything away, literally just, uh, you know, trashed everything that I had for Roswell Astronomy. And uh, as I was saying in the beginning, the backlash was quick and impressive. A lot of people were super pissed off about it. A lot of people were very supportive about it, but uh, you know, the, the feeling was probably 50-50 either way. I was not considering coming back uh, until I received an email from uh, one of the subscribers that uh, truly, it truly just crushed me um, re reading his email and it was along the lines that, uh, it, 
it was some how-to videos that I had done, a series of how-to videos I did, and how appreciative he was of those videos and how much they had helped him, and he was using them uh, to, to go back and to review when, when he was doing his processing. And it, it did not dawn on me how it was those videos that was making the differences uh, for subscribers. Uh, looking at it now, I remember I did the exact same thing with, uh, with Chuck uh, from Chuck's Astrophotography on his, uh, uh, on his videos for uh, SGP, for Sequence Generator Pro. And, you know, in the early days, I would go and set up SGP and I would always go watch his videos to tweak my settings. Um, and it just meant the world to me, and uh, and it was so awesome to have to have that there to be able to go and to get and to learn from and to use. And um, I, it never dawned on me what would happen if if Chuck took his channel down. That that never occurred to me. And getting that 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 gentleman's email really meant a lot. And he had asked if if I had any of those old videos left, I could send to him. And I, uh, and I did not <laughs> because I trashed them all. Uh, so I, I, I made a personalized video and was going to Google it to him or something. And I, I can't remember the reason why it wasn't working. But so I said, well, screw it. I'll just create a quick YouTube channel because that's the easiest way to upload information. And then it's at his fingertips whenever he can use it or need it. And I did that, and so that was the quote start of Georgia Astronomy. I had no plans on moving the channel forward. Literally was to put one or two videos on there and be done with it. But after, the, after that video hit, some of the old subscribers had found, had found it and had emailed me and said, hey, are you Georgia Astronomy now? And I said, well, yeah, actually it is me. And then more requests came in for the old, some of the older videos, stuff that I had done. So I started posting those videos back up again. And uh, then the feedback just became incredible. And all of a sudden I started getting like a bunch of emails from different people talking about how they missed me, how they, they missed the content, how they missed me being goofy, how they missed Country Kenny, um, you know, how they missed the humor, how they missed this, how they missed that. And I didn't realize the full, the impact that it was having. Now I'm not talking like I was, you know, giving peace to third world countries and crap like that. It's nothing like that. And, you know, when I say there were a bunch of people, there were like 30, 30, 32, 33 people that had emailed me that were all like, man, we really would love to have you back. We're glad you're doing something again. And they became just super supportive. And it, it really, it really kind of, it, it took me back to the original reason why I started Roswell Astronomy, and it was to help other people. It wasn't to become YouTube famous. And that kind of got in the way. So what what is George Astronomy gonna do? Well, it, it's, it's gonna do the same thing um, that Roswell Astronomy started out to be. Uh, but with the understanding that, yes, it is going to be entertaining. Um, you know, will I say no to monetization? No, of course not. You know, having an extra hundred bucks a month to put towards your astronomy gear, uh, that's a given. I mean, who doesn't want that? But I think this time it's less of let me keep you entertained. Um, you know, the, the whole... Oh, you're not entertained. You know, it's <laughs> it's not going to be that. Um, and I'm probably going to keep it more personal, kind of like what I'm doing right here with this video. I, I've actually written down a bunch of ideas um, for these kind of videos, which may or may not interest you. And if it doesn't, that's fine. It, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, for me, it's just something that I feel like I need to do and that I should do. Uh, doing the you know the help videos um, while they're they're not you know, they don't have a garnered a huge following. Um, you know, the videos that do, uh, especially from the Roswell Astronomy, any of my uh, equipment reviews were just stupid astronomical. Um, the, the Rasa videos 
my God, there were like 10,000 hits on the Rossid videos alone. Um, the uh, Explorer Scientific was over seven or 8,000 you know, views. So, you know, of course, over two years, that's, it doesn't seem like it's a huge number, but that's pretty damn big when you have like 3,000 subscribers, but you know, you're, you're getting over 20,000 views uh, every six months. That's pretty big. Um, so I'll, I'll be doing more of that, but also too, it's going to be under a different understanding. So if you saw, I did the, the Raptor, the Radiant Raptor 61 video, which I've already gotten feedback from people saying, Hey, we appreciate your honesty. Um, that if, if a couple of people even commented that I was short sighted because of the, the comparison with the 61 and that, uh, with the uh, sharp star, which was identical, uh, which, you know, turned out to be true. And I even printed a retraction there. Um, there will be more equipment reviews. Uh, there will be more setup videos. There will be more uh, how-to videos. There will be um, more of these one-on-one -on -one videos. And, and again, I really don't care if you like them or not. Uh, it's just what I need to do. So I'm going to wrap up with this because it's already 25 minutes. I probably lost you about 20 minutes ago. If you are still watching, uh, one of the things I do want to say is I, I, I want to thank all of you who stuck with me through Roswell Astronomy into Georgia Astronomy. I want to thank all those your new subscribers, and, uh, and I hope I'm able to do you justice. Um, you know, for, for the veterans, uh, you know, I wish I could thank everybody, but, you know, I, I especially want to, I definitely want to throw shout outs to Alan uh, to Chris, to Ben, uh, to Cheryl, to Luis, to Pablo, to Michael, to um, uh, James, to, oh my God, there's like just a, a plethora of names that are coming to me. Um, of all these people, I just, just thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you for being supportive. And, you know, thank you for sending me words of encouragement and, and thank you for not disconnecting from me, even after I turned the channel off and I was gone for a couple of months. Um, Y'all really just don't know how much uh, that lifted my spirits and really, really formed the decision to, to come back again. If it wasn't for you guys, um, uh, George Astronomy wouldn't, wouldn't be back. It wouldn't be on the air at all. Um, and I, I wouldn't be back into the hobby because when, when I left the hobby, I sold everything, everything I sold, got rid of everything. Um, so starting back out, you know, started out kind of small with the, uh, with the CEM 28 and the, the Radiant Raptor. But uh, yeah, going forward can only, can only be good things. And uh, definitely this time I've got my sophomore eyes on instead of my freshman. And uh, yeah. We're just going to continue to, to give you good content. And whether you watch the videos or not, that's up to you. Uh, and if you've watched this till the end, thank you so much. And uh, this is George Astronomy.